You know, nothing really beats a great night's sleep. Hey everyone, Dylan Schumacher, Citadel Defense, and today we're gonna to talk about sleeping in the field. Uh, I have, if you follow me over on Instagram, uh, I have been gone camping a couple times this summer with my kids. And um, it's a great thing to do to practice your own field craft, right? Your kids have fun because you're out camping and doing whatever, and you, you just get to choose to kind of rough it a little bit more where, you know, just bring your ruck and whatever you would bring when you go out, and then, you know, your tent and your, uh, your not, excuse me, not your tent, your poncho, uh, your sleeping bag, you know, maybe your bivy bag, your foam mat, whatever you're using, and roll that sucker out, and you just sleep out in the open the best you can, and. You know, if you got some trees, maybe you can pin up a tarp, maybe not, whatever, and just make it work and figure it out, right? And so I've done that a couple times this summer, uh, hoping to continue to do more of those going forward, because again, great way to just practice your field craft stuff uh, and your, your kids have fun at the same time. It's a family time field training exercise kind of all in one. So anyways, as I've gone out on these, one of the things that I've been trying to dial in better is my sleeping kit, is, is how I'm going to sleep. And I've come down to understand, and, and maybe some of you already know this, you're like, yeah, duh, uh, or, or maybe this will be helpful to kind of give words to how you understand it, but there are three main factors that I think affect quality field sleep. Uh, the first one is comfort control, okay? So you have to be comfortable. Now, whatever that means for you is it varies, right? Some of you would be like, oh, I'll just, I'll just sleep on the ground, and, and you can be comfortable and you can fall asleep that way, and, Hey, more power to you. If you are, and I think this matters by the way, if you're like a back sleeper, a side sleeper, or a stomach sleeper, uh, if you're a back sleeper, I think you're actually kind of made for field sleep. Uh, you, I think you have the best of, of all the worlds, right? Because you can kind of roll your mat out, you can lay on your back, you know, maybe use your pack as a pillow, whatever, and you can, you can kind of go to sleep, right? I am a stomach sleeper, which I think is the worst possible thing you can be uh, when being a field sleeper person. So for me, right now, I have a blow-up uh, air mattress, like a um, Thermarest Neolite, uh, fancy little field mattress, and uh, I blow that sucker up, I uh, put that in a baby bag, and, and then I have an inflatable pillow, right? So for me, currently, right now, that's my kind of sleep setup. You need to be comfortable. And like I said, you can be anywhere on that, on that spectrum of comfort, right? Between like, I don't need anything, I'm just gonna man up and sleep because I can do that, like some kind of weird freak person, uh, all the way to I'm a sissy pants like myself who needs like a thick blow up air mattress, right? Somewhere in there, you need to be comfortable. And what that means for you, will, your mileage will vary, right? Uh, so, Number one, you gotta be comfortable. If you can't be comfortable, again, whatever that means for you, you're gonna have a hard time sleeping. And we're thinking, again, imagine like, you know, you're sleeping in the, day, the field for multiple days in a row, right? We can all just get through one night of terrible sleep, okay? You can do it, you can, you can get through, you might be really tired, kind of sleep drunk the next day, you may or may not be. If you've had really good sleep up till then, you can miss a night of sleep and keep ticking pretty, pretty easily, right? Or at least get bad sleep and, and pick up the next day fairly handily because you're well rested, right? But if that starts to happen multiple days, right? If you've ever been a parent with a newborn, you understand how this works, um, it, it catches up to you, right? So you gotta be comfortable. Uh, number two is climate control. And what I hear, mean, this is this kind of goes tail and or hand in glove with it, is uh, you need to con not control your climate because you can't do anything about the weather, but you need to be prepared for the weather. So that might mean a bivy bag, right? That might mean an overhead tarp shelter. Uh, that might mean enough uh, insulation between you and outside, right? If it's cold, you don't need more layers, better sleeping bag, etc. You might need a thicker mattress to keep you further off the ground. Like you need to control all the temperature related, weather related stuff, or and again, you can't control it, but be prepared to handle it, right? So it's like, yeah, it's gonna rain tonight, but we got the shelter and I got my bivy bag set up and yeah, it's gonna be 40 degrees, but I have this sleeping bag, which is rated for such and such temperatures. And I'm gonna put on this wool shirt and these socks and you know, you gotta be able to deal with the climate stuff, right? Because again, if you're getting rain in your face all night, you're gonna have a really tough time sleeping, right? So you have to have some kind of system to deal with that. Uh, which that's, I think, what most of us think when we think about field sleeping is climate control. How am I gonna be warm enough, right? Do I have enough layers to be warm? Which is, an, again, an important thing to consider. And the third one, I think this one's actually the most sneaky one, is uh, critter control. And what I mean here primarily is insects, although you know you don't wanna, you don't wanna get bit by a raccoon, that would be bad. Uh, but Primarily insects, right? Like 
For example, this most recent time uh, when I'm filming this, the most recent time I went out, I uh, had a mosquito that was just buzzing in my ear all night, right? Like my, I had a, a boonie hat on that was permethrin. Uh, I had my sleeping bag that was permethrin. But this mosquito just had it out for me, right? And was just buzzing, you know, the, the really annoying buzzing right when you're in, there in your ear, uh, all night on and off in my ear and made sleep really difficult. I was comfortable. I had enough climate control, but I didn't have critter control. And so that really made sleeping difficult for me, right? So you have to have that magical triad of, of sleep components to have effective field sleep. Now again, what that means for you is probably variable, right? What your comfort level is, is probably gonna vary based on your person and your experience, et cetera, et cetera. What your comfortable, real, or excuse me, your climate control rating is, probably a little less will vary with, with you, but still there'll be some variance in there, right? But I mean, if it's zero degrees outside, you're just gonna need more layers. Those are just, those are just facts in the ground, right? Um, you know, pack light, freeze at night, right? You've heard, you've heard this phrase. Um, and then, you know, the critter control thing. Now that one probably has the least amount of variance, I would think, uh, just because again, if you're getting bitten by insects when you're trying to sleep and mosquitoes are puncturing your flesh, uh, I don't know anyone who can sleep with that, right? That's horrible. So you've got to be able to control all three of those factors. And that I think for right now is the key to an effective night's sleep in the field. So I hope that's been helpful. Hope that gives you something to think about. When you think about your sleep kit, try to think about it in those three categories. And I really think that will help you out. Do brave deeds and endure.